securing web application is one of the most important jobs to do, and usually one of the hardest thing to pull off. That said, in this video we are going to learn how to implement authentication in ASP.NET Core application using the JSON web tokens. Also, in the next video we are going to cover the usage of JSON web tokens in Angular application consuming our API. So, as you can see, we are creating a mini-series for this topic. If you prefer reading about it, and also if you want to download the source code, feel free to visit the article on the Codemaze blog site. The link is in the description below. Before we get into the implementation of authentication and authorization, let's have a quick look at the big picture. There is an application with a login form. A user enters the username, password and presses the login button. After pressing the login button, the application sends the user's data to the server's API endpoint. When the server validates provided credentials and confirms that the user is valid, it's going to send an encoded JOT to the client. JSON Web Token is basically a JavaScript object containing some attributes of the logged in user. It can contain a username, user subject, user roles or some other useful information. At the client side, we store the JOT in the browser's local storage to remember the user's login session. We may also use the information from the JOT to enhance the security of our application as well. Now let's talk a bit more about the JSON Web Token. JSON Web Tokens enable a secure way to transmit data between two parties in the form of JSON object. It's an open standard and it's a popular mechanism for web authentication. In our case, we're going to use JSON Web Tokens to securely transfer a user's data between the client and the server. JSON Web Tokens consist of three basic parts. The header, payload, and the signature. So, this is the example of a simple JOT. Every single part is shown in a different color. The first part of JOT is the header, which is a JSON object encoded in the Base64 format. The header is a standard part of JOT and we don't have to worry about it. It contains information like the type of token and the name of the algorithm. In the decoded section, we can see the header sample. After the header, we have a payload, which is also a JavaScript object encoded in the Base64 format. The payload contains some attributes about the logged in user. For example, it can contain user ID, user subject, and information about whether a user is an admin user or not. If you look again in the decoded section, we can see the payload sample. Finally, we have the signature part. Usually, the server uses the signature part to verify whether the token contains valid information, the information that the server is issuing. It is a digital signature that gets generated by combining the header and the payload together. Moreover, it's based on a secret key that only the server knows. After this theory introduction, we can move on to the coding part. We have created a new web API application for this video. To configure JAT authentication in .NET Core, we need to modify startup CS file. For the sake of simplicity, we are going to add all the code inside the configure services method. But the better practice is to use extension methods so we could free our configure services method from extra code lines. If you want to learn how to do that and to learn more about configuring the .NET Core Web API project, you can read our article on that topic. The link will be in the description of this video. So, let's start. The first thing we are going to do is to install Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication Jot Barrier Library. As you can see, we are using the Nougat Package Manager to install this library. After the installation, let's start 
by calling the add authentication method and provide the value for the default authentication scheme and for the default challenge scheme. Then we use the add jot barrier method to set up some required options for the authentication. To set up these options, we have to populate the token validation parameters property by creating a new token validation parameters instance and populate the validate issuer property, validate audience, validate lifetime, and validate issuer signing key. According to this configuration, the token is going to be valid if the issuer is the actual server that created the token, the receiver of the token is a valid recipient, the token has not expired, the signing key is valid and is trusted by the server. Additionally, we have to provide a value for the valid issuer, audience, and the secret key that the server uses to generate the signature for JOT. For the sake of simplicity, our secret key is inside the configuration part. But a much better practice is to store the secret key into the environment variable. Now, we require one more step to make our authentication middleware available to the application. Let's add the app.useAuthentication expression in the configure method. And that's all we need to configure the JOT authentication in ASP.NET Core. We already have an API endpoint weather forecast to get some example weather information and that endpoint is not secure. Anyone can get the resources from this endpoint. So in this section we're going to add a new API slash customers endpoint to provide a list of the customers. This endpoint is going to be secure from anonymous users and only logged in users can consume it. Now let's add an empty customers controller in the controllers folder. Inside the controller we are going to add a get action method that returns an array of customers. In this case, we return only two customers, John Doe and Jane Doe. More importantly, we're going to add an extra security layer by decorating the action method with the authorized attribute so only logged in users can access the route. Now we can start the application, open the browser and try navigating to the customer's endpoint. And we can see the 401 error. So this means our customer's endpoint is protected and we can move on with the video. To authenticate anonymous users, we have to provide a login endpoint so the users can log in and access protected resources. A user is going to provide a username and the password and if the credentials are valid, we are going to issue a JSON web token for the requesting client. Before we start implementing the authentication controller, we need to create a models folder and add a login model class to hold the user's credentials on the server. Let's add the username and the password properties inside. Now let's create the auth controller inside the controllers folder. The first thing we're going to do is to modify the route attribute. Then let's use the HTTP POST attribute to restrict this action for the POST requests and add the login route. Okay, we need our action with the from body login model parameter. If this parameter is null, 
we return a bad request with the appropriate message. Then we check if the username and the password are valid. As you can see, we have them both hard-coded, but in the real-world app, you would have to make a call towards the database. For an easier understanding, we will leave it as is. If the check passes, we extract the security key by instantiating a new symmetric security key class, where we call the encoding.utf8.getBytes method and provide our security key. Then we create the sign-in credentials variable and populate it by instantiating the sign-in credentials class, where we pass our security key and the hashing algorithm. The next step is to create token options. For that, we create a new JOT security token and populate the issuer property, the audience property, the claims property with an empty list, the expires property to 5 minutes from the moment of creation, and the signing credentials property. Finally, we create our token string by instantiating the JOT security token handler class and calling the write token method where we pass the token options variable. Of course, we call the OK method to return a response with the created token. These all take place if the user's credentials are valid. But if they are not, we call the unauthorized method to return the 401 response. Excellent. Now let's start our API and open the Postman. We have prepared the POST request with the valid URI and the body as well. Also, we added the headers for the request. After we press the Send Request button, we are going to see a 200 OK response with the JOT string in the response body. Excellent! Now we know how to integrate the JOT support in our web API application and how to generate the JSON Web Token to protect our resources. As we said, in the next video, we are going to introduce the Angular application and show how to use this generated token to access protected endpoints and also how to implement a role-based authorization by using the JSON Web Tokens. So, that's all for this video. Your support means a lot to us and if you didn't already, please hit those like and subscribe buttons down there. You can also use that bell button to get notifications from our channel. Don't forget you can visit the Codemaze blog to download the source code and you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in another video. Until then, all the best!